When you're making games, there are three main areas you have to work on. One of them is the game programming itself, the game developing, development. Then there's the game assets, images, sounds, any external files that you're using, any assets that you're using in your game. And the third pillar to me is the game content. So you define rules for a platformer game. Now, what are the levels of this game? Where are all the platforms going to go? Um, this is not the same as actually coding and programming the game. It's a different thing because you, you program your game and then you want to work on the asset, on the content of your game, create different levels, make them easier, more difficult. So ideally, you will want to separate those two different things. The level data in this, this case is all hard-coded in the code of our game. If we want to change our level, we have to go into the code of our game. If somebody else wants to create a level for our game, they won't be able to do so. They would have to get access to the code of our game. So wouldn't it be better if we were able to load external files with the levels, in this case, just one, in this case, just one level, um, so that these external files could be modified by other people, by yourself, your future self, without having to modify the actual code of your game. Well, that's what we'll do in this lesson. I'm gonna show you how to load an external text file, which will have the, the JSON format, and that JSON file will contain the data of your level. So, in your assets folder, we'll create a new folder called data. It's really up to you how you wanna organize your folders. In this case, I'm, I'm gonna do it like that. And in data, there will be a new file, which you can create on your code editor, or, or in, in my case, in Linux, I can just create it um, on the Explorer, which will be called level.json. So JSON is the extension that we'll be using. JSON is a protocol for human readable data so that you write data in a way that's easy for us humans to read and it's also used for uh, machines, obviously, to process. And JavaScript already works in a JSON manner. This is all called the JSON notation for an object. So our, our level file will contain different information. It will contain, for example, the location of the player when the level starts. We can, we can do it like this, set some coordinates. So the player will start on x um, 10 and y and y will be 545. All the labels need to need to be with double quotes for this to work. That's just how it how it works with JSON files. That's the correct way of uh, writing a JSON file text file. Otherwise, you will get an error. And we also want the location of the platform. So we're going to call that platform data. And that will be an array with those coordinates. So this is for now. We will add more things later. We no longer want to have this. So we let's get rid of this part. And in here we will load. We will we will actually parse the file. But we need to load it first. So we go to preload, and we load this text file. This dot load dot text. We're gonna call it, give it a, um, a key of level. So just like any asset, it has a corresponding key. And we specify the path, level.json. So we load it as a text file, but we need to parse it as a JSON file so that we can treat it as an object. That's very simple. We'll, we will save that actually in level data like this and we will use the JSON, the JavaScript JSON object. This is part of JavaScript, it's not part of Phaser. It allows us to turn a text that's formatted correctly into a JSON object, into a job object, basically. Uh, how can we access this? This.game.cache gives us access to the raw data of, the, of this text file. Get text, and this is called level. And now, if this works, we should be able to look at this level data in the console. But there's an error and yeah, I wasn't in the right in the right file. So yeah, we obviously get an error because we're still assuming that this platform data exists. Where is it here? But we're not using it yet. But all I wanted to do is just show this object. So we did load it correctly. We have the platform data. 
and the player starting location. So let's replace, instead of accessing platform data like, like this, we will access this dot level data and then platform data. That's how we called it here. So now it should work the way it did before. See how now we're loading this from an external file. Same thing with the player initial location. This is where we define the player. So now instead of saying 10, we're gonna say this dot level data dot player, let me see what it was called, player start dot x. And in this part, it will be player start dot y. And it obviously works the same way. A word of advice, the browser cache will save. So if you change the JSON file, sometimes you might not see the changes here. And it's because your web browser has its own cache. So it's caching the, the previous version of the file. When you're developing, that can be a bit of a pain because you need to clear the cache each time that you change this. But there's a way in, in Google Chrome to avoid this problem. If you go to settings, there's an option that says disable cache while the development, development tools are open. So while you have this open, you uh, disable the cache so you don't have to do that each time. So to summarize, we've created an external text file with the level data. If you want to change something of the level, you can just change this file. You don't have to change the code of your game, of the engine of your game. We load this just like we do a load any asset and then we parse it as a JSON object. And then we have just a normal JavaScript object. Once we have this object, we can obviously show it in the console, make sure it's all good. If there's an error, you'll see it. Also, um, we can just treat it uh, like any object. We can access the corresponding properties. You could obviously even have the size of the world, could be part of this external file. You could have everything as part of an external file. And that allows you to quickly create different levels to, to have other people help you with level creation and they might not necessarily understand the code. So it's a good practice in general to, to use this approach to load um, level inform to separate level information, level content, game content as I call it, from the actual game engine or the, the code of your game.